Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. Are you ready for the big show? Where are we going to go? I'll tell you where we're going to go. 1981. We last left off with the Blue Meanies from Outer Space. And now we're in this section where we're playing all the releases at some point in 1981. And we're going to see some crazy, weird, strange, and who knows where we'll go or what we'll see kind of games. And let's... Press forward and see what our next game is. So after Blue Minis from Outer Space, let's move on with Bomber for the VIC-20. Let's take a look at Bomber. Looks like this is by Noof Comp. No other artwork uh, for this one, so we'll just pop it in and play it on a VIC-20. Released at some point in 1981, here's Bomber by Scott Elder. Way to go, Scott. There it is. Gravity Bomber, or just Bomber, I guess. So VIC-20 does have a joystick, and I'm using the joystick to see if I get any response. I'm not getting anything from the joystick yet. But, oh, space bar is what it was. And the joystick does work. So if you played uh, the, the games that we were, checked out the games we played in the 70s, this is a classic arcade game that we played, I think it's 76, is my guess, called Canyon Bomber. And yeah, it's, it's basically a, a home version of that with uh, different planes. And it's just a reaction time game. You push the button, it drops the bombs, and you get some points. You laugh, you kiss, we uh, go home happy and have a blast. There we go. Yep, that's it. So for Bomber, uh, it's, it's all right. I don't really want to call that one bad for the time because it, uh, it, it it's, it's good enough. But it is not bad. It played exactly like we were used to from the 70s arcade game. So we'll do two and a half stars for Bomber. Nicely done. Great start for our evening. Let's see where we're going next after the VIC-20. Cool. It is time to go to the arcade. And this is Borderline. A phenomenal release by Sega uh, for lots of reasons. Let's take a look at the artwork for Borderline. This advertisement flyer is Karateko's. And you can see it is in French. Cool artwork, though. We're going to be shooting up a bunch of people. And there's the example of the cabinet. Really bad picture. I can't really tell what the artwork is around the outside. Maybe bushes or shrubbery. And there's our uh, arcade uh, PCB. And then we have uh, controls. It looks like we're moving up, down, left, and right, and fire. And our arcade marquee for borderline. And an example of the screenshot, uh, we have a manual for this one too. So let's take a look at the owner's manual, operator manual for the arcade version of Borderline. Yes, by Sega Gremlin. So this is the operator manual and service manual. Looks like this is the one that Sega uh, Gremlin put out for us. And as usual, they still, they're still doing it. We've seen this. The manuals explain it's electronic game mixing extensive use of digital integrated circuitry and television monitor concepts. So it's very dangerous. Every time the warning's on there. All right, so game inspection and setup don't care about that. We want to know about the game. What does it tell us about Borderline? Here we go, game concept. Borderline's a one or two player game in which players attempt to destroy enemy refineries and energy plants. The player moves through four different sectors, constantly under attack by enemy tanks, missiles, interceptors, and drones. And so we have sectors now. Man, they have different names for the different scenes or levels or however you want to call it nowadays. I forget what we saw last time. It was a uh, folder or they, they, they referred to every time you get to a new phase, uh, they, all, they have a different way to describe it. So in borderline, it's sectors. Which sector are we on? Sector one, the player is in behind, uh, deep behind enemy lines, rolling the Jeep down a corridor. They have to dodge fire from interceptors, tanks, and missiles. Drones will attack unexpectedly. The object is to reach and destroy the energy plants at the end of the corridor. And then sector two, once you're through the corridor, oh, this is nice. The player enters a field that contains two sections of dense underbrush patrolled by drones. The drones only enter the underbrush in one place, then follow in the path of the player's jeep, the jeep makes. The player makes a maze through the underbrush to proceed to the top and destroy the enemy plants. In sector three, the enemy tanks come down from the top near the refineries and drones enter from the side. The player outmaneuvers the enemy and destroys the fires at the top. And we have se sector four. So there's two sections of the underbrush. Okay, this is pretty cool. So they, they break it down to here, here too, with all the different options. Oh, that's right. And they call it, yeah, tables. That's what it was. Tables was the other one. Very strange. So we got sectors here for this game. And the rest is more technical, so we'll avoid that. For other versions, we have a Karateko bootleg, a Sedan bootleg, and then another version called Star Raker. 
we're going to be playing the original in Japan. Here we go. This is Borderline, released by Sega at some point in 1981. Now, the reason why this is so big is take a look at the attract mode. We've already seen, I would say, a handful of games that are actual vertically scrolling shooters because we've seen a little bit, if you want to consider fixed shooters like Galaxian, they have a star field that's scrolling in the background, but it's really not scrolling you to different places. This is one of the first games where you're going to be scrolling up and you actually feel yourself traveling up and moving up uh, past the field. Um, and uh, if we consider a game like Rally X, which was scrolling in multiple directions, it still had the play area defined within a map. So you, you knew that you're going to be going to different places, but you didn't think it was going to be continuing uh, indefinitely. So Borderline is one of the first precursors of where we get run-and-gun games. Uh, the, the fact that we're going to be moving up and shooting up and vertically scrolling shooters. It's also not using a ship. We're in a Jeep uh, driving up, and it's actually scrolling all the artifacts on the screen as we go with us. <laughs> yes, thanks. All right, here we go. So let's put a coin in and see what it's like. And push and start. First time checking out Borderline by Sega. All right, so it looks like we got uh, different things on the side we can shoot. For, as far as controls go, it uh, it actually works really well. The scrolling, though, is a little bit weird to get used to because you notice that it's uh, doing almost frame by frame. Oh, it's really cool that we can shoot multiple bullets at once. Love that. And I do have a little freedom, a wiggle room that I can move with my Jeep at the bottom. So I'm not necessarily fixed with just left and right. And I'm explaining a little bit more rather than playing as much because I really want everyone to realize we're playing a game that is uh, scrolling and giving us more uh, to see. Oh, and I actually can, am controlling the speed. And we have a fuel tank at the bottom that's kind of like our time limit of how far we can go. Let's put another coin in and let's really dive in, play a little bit longer and get further so we can see how far this goes to the next scene. It's almost like when we played um, uh, Super Cobra and uh, the other horizontally scrolling shooters that gave us different uh, <laughs> tables or stages, whatever you want to call it, then uh, and you get to see more and more of the game. And every time you move the Jeep up, it actually scrolls faster. So if you stay at the bottom here, it goes a little bit slower. And you do have to make your way to the end. So if I move up, you can see, watch the, the, the screen scroll faster. And then the, uh, the object is you have to be blowing up the uh, red silos on the side. And once you blow enough of those up, then you move to the next scene. And then we got some more Jeeps coming after us. There we go. Made, it, made our way through. Now we're going to the next section. So it's, it's continuing to scroll up and it's giving us the feeling that we're going to see something else. So now we're doing almost like a stealth mission to, to sneak around. I think we have to get ourselves to the top here. So we're, we're actually digging through and making the path. Oh, he got me on that one. Okay, so I touched him on that one, but you're trying to blow up, I think, the top area. We can refer back to the manual if we need to, but this is awesome because we're digging our way through, I would say, uh, Dig Dug. We haven't seen Dig Dug yet. It'd be more a la Robbie Roto, I guess. <laughs> and he shot me on that one. So we already had one phase vertically scrolling. Ne next phase is allowing us to dig through uh, and create our own maze, uh, a top-down maze. All right, let's put another coin in and push start. As far as sound effects, it really has just a low hum of the motor of the car. And then after, let's uh, speed this up, go a little bit faster here. And then the, the sound of your shots, and that's about it. Yeah, we're going really, really fast in this one. Oh, he got me there. Great scrolling, though. The energy and excitement is awesome. I love it. You can also determine the speed. I'm trying to go quick. Maybe I should slow down a little bit to be able to get to the edge. Here we go. So now we go to a mini boss. I narrowly avoided that missile. I don't know how that happened. And then we work our way to the top, blow everything up. And then after you blow them up, then you move to the next phase. We now sneak our way through to enemy for forces.
So they start going through the end, and we're, let's, this time let's go just on this side. It's playing, I can feel the four-way joystick, so I, I understand that... Here, let's just go to the top, blow them all away. There we go. Yeah, if you blow them all away, then you move on to the next phase. So it's going to scroll up again, and now we move to another area, and I'm not familiar with this one. Okay, so this one, you just have to get all the uh, missiles blown up. So this one feels almost like we're playing a tank-style game. Oh, he got me. I love that we're seeing games now change from stage to stage or table to table or sector to sector. And you can you, you can actually see more. And But the other thing this game doesn't do that we've already seen with other games is it um, it is not allowing us to continue right where we left off. So we're on this sector. And now if I put a coin in again and push start, I'm starting all over at the first sector. So it doesn't really matter how good, uh, uh, how, many, how much money you have. Uh, we, I'm, just, I'm familiar with games from the 90s, though. We play games like uh, Final Fight. Uh, you, you play the arcade game Final Fight. If you had enough money, sure, you can see the end of the game. But you have to spend a lot of money for it. And so these these games that are earlier, um, from the early 80s, you can't just keep pumping in quarters and expect to win or see more and play more of the game. You actually have to be good to play. There's only one or two games we've seen, Fantasy comes to mind right now, where you could see and play f multiple levels. And as long as you have more money, just keep going and going until uh, you, you see the end of the game. At least before it loops. Let's go. There we go. Nice. Oh, love it. Not really having any trouble with the fuel or time limit. But this game encourages you, I want to see what's next. I want to see what the next uh, phase is or, how, or what's going to happen if we do it. All right, so here we go. Going up. I, I went really risky that time. So before I kind of did a sneak attack, I popped up, shot a few, then went back down and made a tunnel. Let's see if we can do it this time. Go over on this side and then pop a couple right there. And you notice that my shot goes from the left to the right and then back again. So now let's go just constant fire on this side. Made it. Nice. Okay, so now we're going to the next phase. This time I'm going to try to go to the top and just shoot everything at the top of the screen without going for the red missiles and see if that works. Yeah, this feels lots of vibes from Tank right here. Oh, <laughs> he ran into me. So now I want to see more. I want to see what the next level is, and that's one of the big draws of the arcade games now. How many scenes or how many how many different things can you go through before uh, the game's over instead of just playing the same level over and over again? All right, let's put another quarter in and go again with Borderline. That's how you put quarters in in 1981. You just throw them at the arcade and get going. Also, we're seeing uh, games that are shooters changing the formula up where you don't have the exact same shot. And so you can see, oh, you can see here that we're getting people to shoot left and right and up on top of the screen. So really cool there. And also, every time that I continue, I'm able to... Um, I'm continuing and taking over where I left off on the same uh, playthrough. So it, it's, it's still... Ugh, it's going to be tight. <laughs> All right, here we go. Making our way to the top. I'll just sneak by. Yeah, no pressure there. Easy. Got it. Nice. Okay, so I don't see... Yeah, we only got one of extra life. So let's see if we can get through this one and then the next one and see the next scene after that. It's still doing pretty basic sprites. Same one color sprites. Oh, he didn't fall for that one. All right, let's see if I can get him here. So the, the Jeep we're driving is red. The enemies we're driving are solid white. It's not m mixing up the sprites. It kind of reminds me of um, uh, Z uh, ZX Spectrum graphics. Go oh, yes. Okay, we got it. Now we're going to the next one. I'll just go to the top and see if I can knock out uh, all the objects at the top of the screen without going for the missiles. That'll just get us to the next scene, but it does... Uh, we lose some uh, bonus points there. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, he touched me. How many other lives do I got? Okay, one last life. Does it save where I blew up? It does. Okay, let's try it again. Same idea. Go for this guy. 
go for the top. No, he shot me. And another game over. So I want to be able to get to the top and see the next phase. So this time, let's try messing around with the uh, the dip switch and see if we can get uh, extra lives. So there's always something you can do on the, the extra. <laughs> there we go. You can see as we flip the switch, this is the back of the arcade cabinet. You can say infinite lives, which means we'll be able to continue to play and it won't reset uh, or, or, or stop and have a game over. We'll just keep playing uh, as long as you put money in and get quarters for it. All right, so here, here we go. Let's do it again, putting a quarter in and push and start. Here we go. Infinite Lives Borderline. I really enjoy the mechanic that the shot is not exactly the same. It's slightly shooting to the left, slightly shooting to the right. But it's um, uh, the, the different game modes is the best draw for this. And that's what we're seeing as arcade games push. Push forward in the future doing better and better is making you see something else or another level or state. Oh, got me. So if you look in the bottom left, let's see if it takes away a life. I think it's just going to keep going. Oh, it is. Okay, so on one quarter, I think I can just keep going uh, infinite lives all the way to the edge. I guess if you were an operator for the arcade cabinet, you could flip the switches and then mess around with it. But when it's time to make some money, no, you got to make that arcade game difficult. So those quarters keep pumping in. Okay, here we go. Sneaking through. This time, let's go to the, the right side and see what pathway they make. Amazing that there's another game that this is, is digging and we still haven't seen Dig Dug yet. I thought Dig Dug was first. Poor Dig Dug. Looks like the blue tanks do not dig, so let's make our way to the top. I'm not going to shoot them. I'm just going to keep doing this all the way across. Looks like they slowly... Oh, it missed me. Wow. Okay, we'll take it. All right, going to the next phase. So here we go. This is going to the top, trying to blow up everything at the top of the screen. So you can kind of... You have to keep track of your bullets to decide or under, understand which one you left off on. There we go. For the show, whenever we showcase arcade games, and we don't really play them as long. Okay, we got a next phase. So now we have to sneak our way through. Oh, okay, they're blocking us with a brick wall. What? They can go through the wall? Okay, but I can't. Can I shoot? No. Okay, so only they can uh, make their way through the wall. Got it. But we're playing these games really quick. And so as we play... I don't really have as much time to just get used to the controls and the game itself. Imagine playing a video game and then going to a no totally different video game on a, on the same console. If you play a, a, a two different Sega Genesis games, it takes a little while to get used to the controls. Well, now imagine going to... Let's shoot our way through. Got it. Nice. Imagine going to a different console and a different game and doing that back to back to back. It takes a little bit of time to get used to. Nice play. Go on. Okay, we will. All right, so now we're doing another level. And it is. It's a different level. Oh, this is awesome. So I've been really wanting to showcase this for arcade games that are giving us more. More levels to see. So every now and then we might use the dip switches to be able to see far enough. A great example is Donkey Kong. Whenever we were playing the original Donkey Kong, we still didn't see all the, the screens that were, were, that were in Donkey Kong. Oh, this is nuts. Let's slow down a little bit and see if it slows the screen down. It doesn't look like it is. Oh, great. All right, so still making our way to the top. Let's blow up a couple missiles, take out these guys. Oh, this is so much fun. All right, same one at the top, blowing them all up. Nice, so the formula isn't exactly the same. They changed up a little bit. The level looked a little bit different on the second time through. And here we go, this one. Let's see what changes up on this one. Uh, if they can dig through, they can't shoot through the wall, so... I'm going to try to lead around this side. There we go. All right, making my way over, on, over here. He's following me. I can't believe I missed that shot. All right, so the blue takes... Looks like they can't dig through, so I'm just going to get up here. No. All right, they changed it up, adding some walls at the top, so you can't just aim on one side and shoot all the ones away. Oh, fantastic. Go. <laughs> it does take a little bit to get used to that four-way joystick. When you expect the diagonal to work, no. It's uh, only up, down, left, and right, and that's it. <laughs> we do have it set for infinite lives for Borderline. So with one quarter, 
you can play forever. All right, so here we go, making our way at the top, get shot by the one of the blue tanks. I'm still gonna go up to the top and shoot my way to blow up the things at the top of the screen. Yeah, it looks like the enemies are a little bit faster the second time around, and they made a l slight changes to the level layout. That is very refreshing. No. <laughs> yeah, they're following my pattern and they're starting to dig more holes. And every time they dig, it saves uh, the patterns that they make too. And whenever you dig, you move a little bit faster or a little bit slower, I mean. All right, let's see if we can sneak. Oh, he got me on the top. But we got the far left side and then you do the far right side and let's see. I don't know if you can make out the sound. It's a really slight hum of the Jeep sound that's happening in the background. It's just a little bit. I wouldn't say the the, the graphics or sound, uh, not graphics. I wouldn't say the sound is really in a big department for Borderline. But I mean, it's Sega. Who knew we were going to play Sega tonight on Chronologically Gaming? No. Okay, we got the uh, left side and middle. Let's go for the right side next. I was kind of hoping they would do like fantasy and this game would have some pop music as an 8-bit sound like we'd hear Madonna's Borderline, but nope. No Borderline on Borderline. Or no music or no Diddy. Where's the, the cute little music to play? Oh, see, four-way joystick. I went to the right and it brought me down on accident. Since you have those locked in positions, it gets really tricky. All right, made it through there. Dodge it, go, go. Got it, wow, barely. Yeah, they're going a little bit faster, but it isn't it, crazy difficult. All right, so I, they changed it up again. I can't just shoot my way at the top all the way. Let's see if we can go over here. There you go, nice. And see, now I'm kind of stuck. Yep, because I have to go down. I can't just shoot left and right to get the other ones. All right, going again. Top right side. Oh, got me again. They're also firing faster. Most of the games in the 80s are going to get progressively more and more difficult uh, every wave you play. <laughs> that again, trying to go left and the, and the four-way joystick went right. This is almost like the evolution of the tank genre of game because I am moving up, down, left, and right. Well, I'm not turning it like the uh, tank controls. But uh, let's go there and knock him out. There we go. Let's see if we can take this guy out. Oh, man. See, they're, they're firing ahead of time, too. To get me before I even get there. They're anticipating me. There we go. Got it. I don't know what happened to the other blue tank, but he's gone. Wow. Close shot on that one. All right. So we won't continue ad nauseum with this one, but uh, I am impressed. Borderline is very, very fun. It's kind of similar to the other horizontal sc scrolling games we played where the level gets, you get to see more and more and it changes up to something else. You might go in a cavern. And so it's great to see what is next for Borderline and the other scenes. Is it worth though, uh, like a maxed out rating? The, the, the big reason this one, I would say pushes higher up than everything else we've seen up to this point is because of its influence on the shooter genre and actually having a scrolling game to, play, to be played. So if I'm trying to think of all the games we played on the arcade, yes, this is way up there. But we played computer games that have had scrolling. A shooting, like flying a plane, and it, it is literally scrolling the screen. Uh, Phantoms 5 by Nasir Gabelli uh, comes to mind. We've already played that. But it, when you think of the arcade games, uh, th this one's highly influential. So I'm going to go four and a half, not quite all the way to the top, but it's way up there as one of the best games you could play on the, in the arcade and in 1981. So there you go, Borderline. Fantastic release. All right, let's see what our next game is. We're now back on the VIC-20, and this is Bounce Out. What is Bounce Out? No information on this one, so we just pop it in play. Released at some point in 1981. We're checking out Bounce Out. Published by Creative Software Incorporated. Which paddle we want? We'll do the big one. <laughs> Showing off the VIC-20 sound. <laughs> nice. All right, use this joystick, and it's Ball and Paddle Breakout. Bounce Out. They're going to run out of names eventually for this formula. I mean, come on. Uh, we've had Breakout, Breakthrough, uh, Break In. 
uh, now we have Bounce Out. I'm trying to think of the others, but there's a ton out there. But yeah, it's a, a very, very capable, capable, very amazing port uh, of Breakout for the VIC-20. Bounce Out gets the job done, and it feels pretty good. Even though you're not using a paddle, the joystick works. Let me see how fast I can move. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's speeding up, but it's, it's Breakout. We should bust out the Atari commercial. Does it bring out the kid in you? Breakout or bounce out? Yeah, really cool sound. Uh, compared to the Commodore Pet, the VIC-20 uh, has a much better sound chip. But it is not anything compared to the Commodore 64, which we won't see until, I believe, next year. Kind of shows you how fast the industry is going. Amazing. All right, so that's pretty much it for Bounce Out. Uh, for the time, it is very uh, average, standard, what we see for uh, every other game on the, on the show. It's a ball and paddle game, so I'm still going to go around average. Uh, we'll still say three stars. It works really well. Very fun to play. So three stars for Bounce Out. All right, with that, let's see what our next release is. We're now going to the Atari Home Computer, and this is Bowling. I don't think we've seen a bowling on the Atari computer yet. We've seen it on the VCS. Let's take a look at the box for Bowling by Atari. By PDI, Program Design Incorporated. Let's take a look at the back of the box. Bowling, an exciting arcade game requiring skill and risk-taking. Bowling? Risk-taking? I don't think so. If you hit the pocket just right, strike. If you're a bit too high or low, split. One to four players can play, and you got three different options, and we'll see those. Very cool. Do we have another artwork for Bowling? Bowling. No, we do not. All right. Let's play some bowling on the Atari home computer released at some point in 1981. We've already seen lots of bowling uh, iterations. And yes, it's time to load that cassette. Don't adjust your sound. That's just what cassette loading sounds like. Yes, bowling by Jerry White. Way to go, Jerry. Bowling. Choose option. No hook, hook, random release. Oh, random, cool, yeah, let's, let's go random, why not, right? Okay, hit return after typing. Type the number of players. Uh, we'll just play two, I guess, for right now. Bowler names, I'll start with Chrono for bowler number one. And in the chat, we got Ivan. Ivan is bowler number two. All right, so Chrono's up. How does this work? How do we bowl on the Atari home computer? It uses, oh, it does. It's using the joystick. I just pushed the button and yeah, it says trigger to continue. So Chrono's up, but I don't see how I'm, how am I aiming? It can't, <laughs> I'm just pushing the button and I wonder if something's going on with the way the graphics is because I'm pushing the button, but I don't see a way to control. Oh, I see. After I push the button, then I can control the ball late. Gotcha. Okay. Nice. So right off the bat, I haven't got a strike. All right, we're going for, again, Chrono's up. And then here, I'm going in. Can I do a spin now? Yes. Okay, so as soon as you hit the button once, the ball just goes. And then after that, you can move the joystick the way you want. I think because we have it set for random. That's why. Okay, going for the split now. Can we get it? No. Nine all, and Ivan's up. This is kind of fun. It reminds me of when the video game industry w was beginning and we were playing bowling that uh, people are now able to do it themselves because of home computers and, and basic. Yeah, looking good. So it calculates the score for us. We have a nice grid. So we've seen this formula before. Ball starts on the left side, rolls down, and then you control it to, to the strike. I guess random's picking different places for it to start, but um, it's, it's nice that you can control it with the joystick. There we go. That works. It's good. It's bowling for the Atari home computer. Need I say more? It does what it needs to, and it gets the job done. So for star rating, it is average uh, for a bowling game for the time. Uh, yeah, it plays really well. I'll say three star. Do I want to say two and a half? Uh, the presentation is, it's all right. Um, yeah, we'll say two and a half. It's not really, it's still around the average range, but not really pushing anything too much. All right, so, and with that, let's see what, what is next after bowling. Where are we going now? Oh, we're going to Germany. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Interton Video Computer 4000, or the VC4000. 
otherwise known as the inter interchangeable programmable video game, uh, which I like the Anderson VC 4000 better, but it does go by other names, similar to the Creative Vision. It's very rare, and it's so rare I couldn't find any commercials or advertising. That's why there's no there's no video for this one. <laughs> All right, so let's see what, what the box looks like for bowling nine pins on the Interton VC4000. There we go. Now, the Interton, the other ones we've seen, the games really aren't as good when you consider the other releases in Europe, but the uh, box is going for the Atari look. They make it look really nice. Take a look at that for the front of bowling and nine pins. Looks like cartridge number 25. And looks like we don't have any manual, so we're just going to go. Released at some point in 1981. Here we go. This is Bowling Nine Pins for the VC4000. Oh, gosh. Well, you can't win every emulation. Let's try another one. With the other go-to. Bowling and Nine Pins for the VC4000. Released at some point in 1981. Yes, we got it. All right, so let's... Get my cheat sheet up, and let's see what we got. So to make this go, the Interton VC4000 had, similar to Atari, buttons on the console itself you had to push. It also had the keypad controls. So you have to... I'm, I'm wondering if this, this uses the keypad controls or not, but let's give it a shot and try it out. If we push reset... <laughs> I don't know if everybody else... It sounded like an audience, but it's obviously mono sound. Oh, crazy. So check out the controls. The Interton VC4000 used uh, analog control stick. And so here we go. This is the left player as the first player. This is me moving the analog around. I'm trying buttons, but buttons do not work. So if I want to bowl, I'm just going to move my guy. <laughs> okay. You just move him up, and that's how you bowl. When you reach the edge, that's the bowl. So right there. Yeah. <laughs> Fascinating. I've never tried a bowling game like this. So let me see if it works with inertia. Can I go really fast? It does. So if I do it fast and whip myself up with the analog stick, it works. Oh, it's waiting for a second player. Hold on. Let's see if the second player is plugged in. It looks like it is not, but that's all right. Uh, let's try a different game mode. I'm going to exit out that way, and we're going to come back again. I'm going to try with a different game mode because we didn't have the manual when we play the Atari games, and it tells us the different game modes. We'll know what to expect because the pins aren't even set up like normal bowling there, but we can flip the switch on the console. So if you look here, we're now in game mode two. It looks like nothing changed on that one. And then game mode three, not seeing anything change there. It's probably changing something up with the the way that you play or, or, or roll the ball. So we got game mode five. Oh, there you go. Game mode six. Okay, let's give this one a shot. So I'm in game mode six for bowling nine pins on the VC4000. And let's go full. <laughs> Trying to do it straight down and it doesn't work so well. There you go. Oh, that was much better. Wait a second. How many times do you have to fire it off? Oh, it looks like it's not working there. So let's do this. Let's switch there. Now we can play two player. Where's my second player at? There you are. Yeah, that's crazy. It uses inertia. <laughs> Whenever you play the game, the second, uh, the, the way you move the joystick uh, uh, is how fast it's going to go. So if I just creep my way up like this, look, it goes really slow down the side. <laughs> and the sound effects are bizarre. So if you're trying to throw it really hard, you have to make sure you're doing it the, 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 uh, straight on. It's kind of tricky to do. And they still haven't hit up a spare. But you notice it hasn't given us any score or rack. <laughs> so you can go really slow and toss it really down, uh, far down. Now, the other games we played on the Andrew 10, they really weren't as impressive graphically. Uh, because it, it was it was similar to the Atari. And it, the Atari already did it first or did it better. A great example is a tank game like Combat. When we, when we played it on the Interton, it wasn't as, as good as the other one. So this is bowling. This one actually plays pretty good. Uh, it, it is a little interesting that the controls are not based on timing. Like, uh, they, they, usually on Atari, you have somebody moving left and right, and you just push the button at the right time. No, this one's based on you, you literally move your player around and then push him at the top. That is fascinating. I love the originality of it. Of not yeah this this idea we haven't seen of moving someone up and then the faster you move them up is how fast the ball goes. Let's see if we can get a good shot without mess, mucking it up. Go. <laughs> see that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's right. It's like uh, motion control bowling. Let's see if we can get both of them. 
<laughs> wow. So that's, this is bowling nine pins for the Interton VC4000. Incredible. And we got two controllers plugged in. I don't even know if there was a single player mode. We didn't have a manual to know the difference between the other ones. But let's see how many game modes this has. So there's game mode seven. It goes back to the strange circular pattern for the pins. And then game mode eight, nine, 10, 11. Wow, lots of game modes. 12, 13, 14. Wow, 16 different game modes. That's pretty pretty nice. All right, let's try some other ones then. I'm just going to uh, skip through here. And let's try 12 out and see what this one's like. All right, so again, we got left control. Does it change anything? Oh, man, I almost had it on that one. I still haven't got a strike on this one. I'm getting a little more used to how it works. Looks like it's still going. Okay, go. Maybe this is only one player mode. Because I'm still going as the, the one player. <laughs> That's really cool. This is the first time we've played a game that does... The, well, it, it comes to mind uh, like the Coco with the analog control stick. But the, the best thing the Coco had for the analog control stick was like Missile Command. This one's cool using the inertia <laughs> of the bowler to how fast you can pump it down to the end of the... Look at that. Oh, man. That's awesome. <laughs> That's true. Six, 16 ain't bad, but 81 is a lot better. But, I mean, this is what they had in Germany and some parts of Europe, but mostly uh, uh, Germany was where this one was. Go! Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see this. Uh, it's a big hit if this is the only one you had in Germany. Wow. Yeah, so one-player game, still, it's, it looks like it's not even using the second player for this, this game mode. Let's see. Yeah, I can't steer it. Maybe another game mode we can steer because afterwards it doesn't do anything. Uh, it c catches on. Let's try a different one. 14. Let's try 14 to see. Looks like there's not even a second player on this one. Yeah, still can't steer after throwing it, so there's no curve. It's just based on how you reach the end. <laughs> I don't even know if you can get a strike on this one. It's like we're playing snooker bowling. They're rearranging the pins for uh, entertainment purposes. All right, let's see if we can get a strike on this one. Oh, so close. Oh, and we get another shot. Okay, you get three chances. Go, go, go. <laughs> awesome. That is fascinating. All right, so that was the Interton VC4000's bowling nine pins. Out of everything else we played for the time, uh, it's still about average because uh, 16 rounds... Uh, but it is it is good and it has the, the the control game mode. I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit just because of the difference in the way we're controlling bowling, not just on timing. So we'll do three and a half stars for bowling nine pins. That was fascinating. All right, so after going to Germany, let's see where we're headed next. Looks like we're back in the arcades. All right, and this is Boxing Bugs. What is Boxing Bugs? Let's take a look at the artwork for Boxing Bugs. Oh, by Cinematronics. Great. This has expanded 32K memory. Full animation of characters on the screen. Surveys indicate bonus rounds after strong player incentives for replay. And a bonus cans awarded. Blah, blah, blah. We know about those. There it is. The arcade cabinet. Very slick. More advertising Cinematronics, who was the fir first people to brought, bring us the vector graphics and um, uh, color vector graphics. And there's our PCB. There we go. For controls, looks like we're using a paddle in the center with a panic button. Okay. So we got a panic button. We have a missile and a glove to punch. Okay. For controls. Yeah. Rot rotating left and right. And it's just rocket and punch. All right. I'll I'm game. Let's play some boxing bugs. All right. Manual time. Boxing bugs manual. Very nice artwork in the beginning. And for table of contents, let's see what we have. Do you have anything about... Yeah, they have th things about the game itself. Purpose limitations of the manual. Don't care. Scrolling down. Information for the operators. Game layout. Game play. Is that it? Is that what we want? Is game play? Okay, yeah. So what is boxing, blood, uh, boxing bugs? 
Game begins with three bugs outside the protective wall trying to maneuver bombs against the protective wall. After a bomb has been positioned, the bug scurries to fetch another bomb. The player uses the cannon to shoot the bombs and bugs with fireballs or punch them with a glove. Cannon is aimed by rotating it to the proper position using that paddle we saw in the middle. If a bomb is struck by a fireball, it slides away from the point of impact. The direction it moves is determined by the angle of impact, just as in shooting pool. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. When a bug is struck by a fireball, it slides away just like a bomb. Bugs hit by the boxing glove are instantly knocked out. As play progresses, the fuses on the bombs burn down and bombs begin to explode. <laughs> yeah, right? I don't know for sure. Uh, I guess you could try anything at the time, whatever title you would want. So after a predetermined amount of time, one wall segment is destroyed. A flying bug moving at the speed as the other bugs will appear. The flying bug moves randomly around the outside. This bug stops and faces the cannon. Wow. Okay, so I kind of get it, but we can refer back to the manual if we need to. Let's go to the arcade and check out Boxing Bugs. Released at some point in 1981. Oh, it looks like that one isn't the best one. Let's try a different way. Let's do this way. There we go. Here we go, Boxing Bugs by Cinematronics. So do I have anything for the attract mode? All right, there we go. So we got our boxing glove. We got some bugs. Why not a fly swatter, though? I'm thinking of Mario Paint. Why would you want to box the bugs? So yeah, they're knocking the balls off. Oh, you knock the balls off using firewalls, and you punch this guy with the glove. <laughs> This is bizarre. So not familiar with boxing gloves. Never saw this one. If you make it through three, uh, round three, then you get a bonus round. So in another incentive, how far can you go? Kind of like Galaga. Keep playing, you get some bonus rounds. That's nice. Use the panic button to get out of hard situations. Well, what is the panic button? I must know. Panic button. Okay, so there's the three. Okay, it's three different buttons. Okay, got it. All right, so let's put a coin in and see what happens. Shake hands and come out fighting. We're going to beat up some bugs. Somebody really had a problem or infestation in their home to make this game. All right, so here we go. We're using the paddle controls. I can see my shot around the outside. That's pretty cool. I'm supposed to shoot the bombs away and then punch the bugs whenever I can. That's a cool mechanic. All right, I, I got to give them one for the originality. We have not seen this kind of thing before. By the way, the center trackball is unique, too. Uh, using a, uh, a track in the center, so you gotta get on the other side before they blow. Nice. Okay, so that was round one. We're making it to round two now. I didn't have to use the panic button. I don't even know which one's the panic button for sure. Oh, see, now they're blowing away faster. Right whenever I get cocky. Nice. Can I get the little guy? Oh! <laughs> that is an awesome effect right there. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Do we have any other games that we've seen that had this uh, th this kind of mechanic where you're, c you're in the center of the screen and you're just circling around with a trackball? We've done it with um, a joystick, but uh, not with a trackball. <laughs> no, get away from me. So if they don't die, then they're just going to keep coming back and try to blow me up again. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the very first color vector-based cutscene we've ever seen. And wow, that is impressive. I bet that took months to make. All right, let's get, uh, I need to focus now because it's, it's, it's kind of tricky doing multiple at once. Plus I haven't even used the panic button, but it worked, we're on round three. Got to get them away and punch them away. So the explo yeah, the explosion gets too close and you blow up. What a cool idea. So, for originality, we haven't seen anything like this. There's a lot of drugs being taken in, in 1981. Lots of fun. Or lots of game ideas, I guess. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Game over.
Now, does it let me continue or not? Oh, it uses the trackball. Oh, gosh. That's always tricky to do. Let's see if it works. It does. Okay. Oh, uh, gosh. Yeah, it's so sensitive to twist the knob. Let's see. We go this way. Wow. <laughs> the cutscene, though. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe that. <laughs> yes, I I've heard the rumors as well. All right, here we go. Let's put another coin in and let's go again. So with one coin, we actually made it pretty far. And I was just spamming the, the fireball button. All right, here we go. Going again. You get a better shot at that one. And then just got to rearrange there. Nice. There we go. So let me get my timing down. Because if I time the shot... Uh, oh, see, I missed that one. If I get the timing down for the fireball, then I can blow them away. Oh yeah, that little one's tricky. He's fast. It's time to bo box. I actually thought we were going to be doing something that was more like a boxing game, but uh, no. This is this is so arcade, it's frightening. Oh yeah, and the yellow one has a glove and comes at us striking. They even show us lives at the very top of the screen, so that's nice. There we go. So it's it's kind of cool because you have you have two different mechanics. You have uh, f sh punching the bugs to get them out of your way, and once you get them out of your way, they die. But you also have to turn around the opposite direction, and so you're you're constantly switching your controls and switching what you do to to yeah. You got to switch to get the fireball there, and then I got to switch to a, a boxing glove to punch him. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yes, I, I, I am with you, Chiptune. Uh, this one's a five star in my book. For the originality and the craziness, I can't believe it. See, it already started so fast, I wasn't even ready. And I had to be get in the mindset of thinking back to back what to do. Oh, got me on that one. Wow. All right, let's see if we can make pass round three. <laughs> Already, see, as soon as the bombs drop, you gotta flip yourself around the opposite way and shoot the fireball to knock them out of the way. But then if you don't shoot the bugs, then the, the bugs will get away. <laughs> yeah, and this is already going really fast. Is that our last one? It is. Game over. Wow. <laughs> That's true. It is like we're playing a cartoon. Man, oh man. So, for boxing bugs, uh, I want to play it one more time. Let's go one more coin in and try it again. I want to see if we can go a little bit further. And it is a little addictive, because it's a different kind of game we played uh, with a different strategy we've never seen before. So it makes me want to keep putting some coins in and get better at it. All right, so I got to remember, that's the way that I can get, get get away, and that's how I can... Oh, nice, we're blowing them up. This round's too, too slow, though. Compared to the other ones... You also have this delay in your punching glove, because it's one of those, you know, cartoony ones. So if you if you punch, you have you have to wait for it to retract and come back, and it leaves you vulnerable after a punch. Yeah, I'm gonna blow that guy up for sure now. Got him! Wow. So much fun. I can't believe it. <laughs> For the record, uh, Chronologically Gaming will not be the uh, game player of the world. My goal is just play everything. Oh, see? Already getting me. Gosh, yeah, he's so fast. So I have 13 bugs to kill. No! So 11 now. So I don't know if I can make it to the end of the round before I gotta kill all the other bugs. Those blasted bugs. Go, shoot! No! See, I hit the wrong one. After you flip yourself around, you have to make sure you hit the right button. Tricky, tricky.
Oh, wow. And the only way, it looks like I can keep repelling the bombs back and it'll kill the other bugs, but that big yellow one, you have to punch. See, these guys will eventually die if I continue to keep retracting bombs back. So it works, because you know, they'll, they'll get blown up by the bomb, but the yellow one will not. There we go. Okay, there we go. Oh, wow. Okay, we still got two lives, two bugs. This is it. There, we did it. Is there another cutscene? Now I really want to see the other cutscene. Oh, we made it to the bonus round. Kill the bugs while they sleep in their bunker by maneuvering bombs into the bunkers. Use fireballs to knock the bombs through the open doors. You have 30 seconds. Ready, go. Oh, this is fantastic. So you have to hit the bombs and get them to blow up while the doors are open. <laughs> and so you have to... Now I can't just really spam the uh, fireball button. Now I really want to uh, time it so I can get the... Get, get the, the bombs to land inside. Wow, so cool. Very tricky. You killed two sleeping bugs for a total of 6,000 points. You've graduated to the rank of sparring partner. Good work, Grasshopper. So you got one life left. Oh my gosh, they're so fast. Look at that. They're blowing away every wall. Look at the oh man, it's so quick. Wow, yeah, that is... That is top tier difficulty right there. We received the rank of sparring partner. All right, won't put our uh, initials in for this time, but man, oh man, that is a winner. I uh, wasn't expecting that for boxing bugs. Uh, we're going to go five stars all the way. Color vector graphics, uh, new play to, way to play the game, uh, strategy and uh, play control works great. So, um, something we haven't seen before. And I mean, come on, a color vector graphic cutscene. Yeah, uh, for 1981, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, can it replace Frogger? Ugh, I don't know. Frogger's up there for me. So uh, right now we're just ranking every video game all at once. If we're going to rank all the best ones, that's a totally different story. I don't know if I can say Frogger, though, but this is really fun. This is a blast. All right, so that was Boxing Bugs. Let's see what our next release is after that. All right, it's the Acorn Atom. Will it crash? This is the biggest system that's crashed the most for us. Because those cassette tapes, those darn cassette tapes from... From England, just uh, they haven't worked so well for us. But it's Breakout. They actually call it Breakout, too. Let's take a look at the box for Breakout on the Acorn Atom. So this is by Bug Bite. And we have any other artwork for this one? Yeah, so we also have the cassette case for Breakout. And that looks like it. All right, here we go. Who knows what will happen on the Acorn Atom? <laughs> yeah, that was the office of Acorn Computers back in 19... I think 1982 is whenever that one was. All right, here we go. Will it run? First things first, we load the tape. We're playing Breakout for the very first time for the Acorn Atom. I don't know what's going to happen. Now, I'm just going to take a guess because I'm getting good at this. I'm sure the catalog is Breakout, right? It has to be. There's no way it wouldn't be. So let's load Breakout and hear those sweet, oh yeah, reading the cassette tunes. There we go. What skill level do we want? Uh, we've never done this before, so let's start on level one. And there it is. We're in. Uh, okay. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. We have no manual, so I don't know the controls. So right off the bat, breakout is... Is that it? Oh, no. That's the... Pushing the... <laughs> pushing shift too many times. Freaks my computer out. <laughs> All right. So let's try this again. Going in again. Level one. Looks like shift is move one direction. I have no idea. X. How do you move up? When you don't have the manual, I have no idea how to move the thing up. A? No? All right. Let's try it again. Skill level one. So far, it is the... Oh, it's alt? Of course. Alt makes total sense. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It is all over the place. All right. Let's try it one more time. Come on, Acorn Adam. I believe in you. Does it want to go? Anything? It's so tiny. All right, so trying again. Loading cassette tape. 
that acorn atom. Oh man. Loading breakout. We have the right way to say. <laughs> yes, if it doesn't run, we're going to throw it against the wall and then go back to the arcade, right? Load. Breakout. Now you understand the pain of computing. In England in 1981. Somewhere out there, someone understands my pain. All right, I'm ready now. I know the controls. It's Alt and Shift. All right, I'm ready. Here we go. Wait, shift is not working anymore. Okay, now it works. And the color changed for some reason. I don't know why. But it's this is it. It is Breakout on the Acorn Atom. Wow. Amazing. Take a look at those graphics. Wow, and it's fast-paced. It's bringing out the English child in me. If there was, ever was one. I don't even know if there was one. Yes, it's it's Breakout for sure. And it's interesting that it's a throwback to the original Breakout that um, Woz Wozniak did for the Apple II. Like the side view. Oh gosh, see shift too many times? Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. No. All right, so that was Breakout for the Acorn Atom. It pretty much crashed everything, but not completely crashed everything. Uh, so I'm still going to give it a uh, bad for the time. Um, it is just breakout, but oh man, man, oh man, uh, that acorn Adam. Well, the emulator is already really tricky. So for this one, I'm going to go for, is it broke? You know, it's not broken. It's broken for us, but when you played it back then, you still had to deal with a lot, uh, but not as much as this. So we'll go, uh, we'll, we'll go two stars. So two stars for breakout for the acorn Adam. I was kind. <laughs> oh, half star, just go full on break. Breakout's broken. All right, so with that, we have uh, reached the end of our evening this evening. On a low note, sorry, uh, England, for the Acorn Atom, you will get better systems. Uh, once the Commodore VIC-20 goes over there and then this uh, Commodore 64, oh yeah, you'll see a, a lot better ones. But in the meantime, we have so many more games to play, lots of uh, more releases to check out. We're only in the Bs playing all the releases released at some point in 1981. And we're going to continue playing all the other games. I don't know what's going to happen next, and that's the fun, where we're going to go or what we will see. But in the meantime, we will catch you next time. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9pm Central, so join us and let us know if you miss any games along the way. This video would not be possible without RetroArch and LaunchBox. Please tell your friends there's some crazy guy out there trying to play every single video game. You can always check out Chronologically Gaming on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We will catch you next time.